Okay, so we know our problem ball is the 5 and the 8. So you're looking to see how you're going to break that out. And if there's no good breakout high percentage ball, look for safeties. I'm not sure if you were trying to break that out or get position on the three to break out the five. Um, I like just taking, instead of sacrificing that seven, just going for the safe right away. So doing this shot right now, but first. That way you've just increased your odds. You don't give anything up. Pretty good safe. I know you meant to hit that six a little bit fuller, maybe to get it behind both of those balls. And Ola, um, here you gotta really take your time and walk around the table and really look at what you have there instead of just kind of firing it in. Um, you wanna kind of assess if there's a safe, or if you were gonna go for the run out, hit it softer and then take a longer shot on that 10, or plan for a safe on your next shot. But really just take your time and make sure you're seeing all the possibilities. Drew, that was a good execution of what you wanted, but I don't really like the odds of running this out because you got to get to the five, then you got to also get to the eight, and the six is in a funny spot. What if you instead played safe on that three, that initial shot, and put it in front of the pocket in the upper left instead? That way you create a problem, and he still has that cluster down there to work on. So you're pretty much guaranteeing that you have another chance at the table instead of risking, this is just a low uh, odds type of run out here where, where they're all at. Well, uh, you guys are both kind of rushing it, and I think you could both slow down and just really walk around the table, see exactly where you want to get get to. That is that turned out really great, but I think you might have been trying to go for it. You could plan for a safe right there, and if you're going to do that, you really do walk, want to walk all the way down to see exactly where your spot is that you want to get to. Let's look at the pattern here. Which stripe is the most problematic and which one will eat more easily lead you to the eight? You see that eight and the nine over there are clustered up and that nine is the toughest because it's the most limiting. Plus you need to get flat enough on that nine so that you don't bump the eight too far and risk making the eight early in the game. Here on that shot right there, you could have used a lot of low right 
to pocket the nine in the lower right hand corner there the wrist there is bumping into that eight that's why we want to do that earlier this is a good very good and so you didn't get where you wanted and that safe was really well executed really good job if you want to make that safe even deadlier with just a little bit more effort like just visualizing it rolling up against that eight and getting frozen to it then you take away tons of possibilities Just made it. Good shot. It would be more natural though, is to give that high left and then go one, two, three rails around and then shoot the eight in the lower right corner there. And that way you can hit it with a little more authority, a little more natural position. And the eight, I think you just might have rushed it a little bit. I'm really surprised that you did that because it looks like you definitely had a shot on the five and that's a that's definitely a run out table right there. Just low right on the five, comes straight across the table, then you got the six and the eight, it's pretty pretty natural. And Ola, that shot on the eight, I don't think you walked around and really looked at that. The eight looks like it would cut in that side. And it's definitely higher odds than banking. Here I actually like the five first and then the six to get to the eight. That's something you could, you could set up and shoot them both and we can talk about a little bit more too when we see each other next So Ola, the next step for you to get to the next level is to really, you got to take your time and go walk around and look at every ball plan on your exact spot. So before you shoot this two, you got to walk around and look exactly where you want to get to on the three and play that three balls ahead. You're going to get that much more precise. It's just the, like the aim small, miss small thing in the Patriot. You want to really focus on that little tiny spot, and it gives you the best chances of running out more regularly. And this, these are some, some good shots, but uh, the more precise you are, the just more you're going to 
be able to make on a more consistent basis. Look at that cut. Wow, that was a very nice cut. Oh, darn it. Great job getting to the rail there. Most players accidentally get on the wrong side. And in this case, you do want to go all the way to the rail to make sure you're on that side. Because no matter where you're at on that side, you're going to get on that nine ball. Awesome. I'm so happy to see you get stand back up and look at that shot again if you didn't feel comfortable shooting it. That's awesome. You're taking your time and waiting until you're ready and envision that collision and then watch it in. Awesome job. Excellent job getting your cue leveled out here. So that's something you were working on. It was There was a little too much space between the rail and the cue stick. So that looks really good now.
Nice breakout. That was awesome. Good job. Wow, they're both on the rail, which is really unusual. And you hit that perfect, really nice and smooth and soft. You don't want to get greedy on that shot and just roll forward just like you did. It's perfect. Now this shot is a delicate shot, but it's definitely makeable. Something to notice is your practice strokes. You don't want to pull back past where the line of the cloth meets the rail. Let's look at it one more time. See how you're pulling back just a little too far. It's just going to make you less accurate because you're limited to that little space at the top of the ball. Ooh. Just barely got away with that. Okay, so now here on the six, the five to the six, you got to really walk around and look at the six and where you need to be. You can either go low right on the five and come in kind of on line to the six because you want to be straighter on the six. Or you could go high and a little bit of right and zigzag back from the upper left rail to the rail to at where you're at and then get sh almost straight on the six. That would be a good one to set up and, and shoot again. This is a tricky one to hit. You gotta really walk around the table and see what your options are. It looks like you can go between those two balls and kind of curve it with a little bit of right. And you'll have to aim towards that middle pocket there. And then the right will make it bite and hit the five. I don't like a jump shot here because there's no landing area. See how it's really far away from those balls that you'd be jumping over. And then the land, it's, it's going to keep jumping even after you hit the ball. And so if there's any option for you to kick at it, usually that's going to be a better option, higher percentage. So ball in hand here, the highest percentage area is like earlier before you want to get to a spot where your, where your body is right now to shoot that six as straight as you can and still have a shot on it with low left and throw it a little to ensure you're going to hit, you're not going to hit the seven first. Um, so you don't really want to go between those balls like that. I don't know if that was your plan or what, what happened there. Another option is that you could have shot the five and then played shape for a safe with the six, like something simple where you plan for a perfect position on the six where you could do a stop shot and have lock it up right behind that seven.
Oh, nice shot. Nice touch. Now there you could have went high right and off of the rail and then towards that nine to get you closer. Here you either want to use high and maybe a hair of right or you could draw that looks like high with a touch of right. Very nice. Look at that. Look at speed control. Absolutely perfect. Awesome. Awesome shot. Woo-woo! Nice and smooth. Very nice. In the beginning of the game, you want to make sure to really take your time, walk around the table and assess everything. What's the problem ball? The five can't go in that bottom right corner pocket because the three is in the way. So the three is something you want to get out, out of the way early. So for a pattern, you had a really good shot on that one initially, the one, then the three, and then go from there. So instead of losing control of that cue ball like that, you had an almost straight in shot on that two. Then you could take that three and then come up and have some options, five or the seven or the six. A good drill is to set up the same exact situation that you had and run it out 10 times and see for yourself what the highest pattern is and how repeatable it is. Getting lucky, uh, but that, that's good. Because running into balls is always risky but that work that worked out okay and good execution even if you got out of line it was awesome execution very nice very nice Awesome, awesome. Really nice, Ola.
okay look at how elevated your you are and how much space there is between the cue stick and the rail that's something i think is just a habit you have associated with certain shots so it's something you just want to check Drew, awesome job walking around and looking at your next shot exactly where you need to be on the two. That consistency of your pre-shot routine is really is what is having you reach this next level. It's really, really great. All right, Ola's up. You're gonna need a bridge for this. You don't want to sacrifice accuracy by not using a bridge. And that was a spot where you wanna do what I call a classic safe, just keep it real simple, some right or low right, and bring the cue ball to the lower right hand rail, and then the one on the upper right hand rail. Excellent walking around the table again, Drew. Really, really good. Okay, so that looked like maybe just an error in planning you want to use high right on that one and have it come back on the two. That's something you could set up later in practice. Ola, it looks like you didn't take nearly enough time on that. On those combos or low percentage, you want to really look at it and take your time and stay really still. So Ola, the biggest thing for you right now is to really focus on that pre-shot routine and look at your next shot. For, for example, on this, on that two, you got good leave on the two. You wanted to hit it thinner with maybe even some high left if you need to, to be able to shoot that three in the side. But just really take your time and give yourself the best odds to get exactly where you want.
really nice rhythm going. You can see how your practice strokes are nice and paced and smooth and, and slow and controlled. Nice pause. Look at that staying still. Plenty of time after the shot. Beautiful. Awesome, how you're touching the spot on the rail where you want to get to. It helps to clear that spot and feel where you want to get to is very, very, very good. Really helps get in the zone. Look at this. Wow. Awesome, awesome. Really, really great.
So here you want to go with low left and pick the diamond on that bottom right rail, one diamond away from the side pocket, and just get to that rail and come off and you'll have a little bit of an angle. That would be a good one to set up and we can go over that together next time. Okay, so here we're going to plan on where that cue ball goes exactly, even if it's on the last ball. Low left, get to the middle of the bottom left rail, that middle diamond there. Awesome. Perfect. Alright, as soon as these balls settle, you want to really take your time, Ola, and plan out, map out every shot. Really assess each shot and which ones have more problems. Work it backwards and forwards. What's your key ball, meaning your last one before the eight? What's the one before that that you're going to make? And what, which opening shots do you have? At first glance, they all look open, but if you look closer, where is that nine going to go easily? The seven is blocking it. Which ball is a good key ball? See that area on the right, the six, seven, and one are great last balls to get you to the eight. So the stripes are, are a little bit tougher, and you had an opening shot on the four that would have took you to the three, five, two, and then back up to work the, the balls on the right, and we can go over that in practice. It's really good, Drew, walking over to see if that eight goes in, looking at what the situation is on all the balls and giving your, your mind the best visualization and the most information. The biggest thing is asking yourself if it's go time, if they're all freed up, which they're not. That six and seven are tied up. You could sacrifice one of your soldiers and then to get shape to play a safe, for example, hit the three in the side, let the cue ball go to the end rail or near that there and try to get a safety out of going off of the seven and locking it up behind the six, for example. Here you have an opportunity for a really deadly safe where you could skim off that six and lock it right behind the six. If you're gonna go for the one, make sure you hit it at a speed that if you miss, you leave it in front of that pocket. And that would be a good one that you could go for a ball in because that blocks several of his balls, but the speed on that is huge.
that is great. That's what you want to do is skim off that six. I would hold that playing cue back further, like more towards the butt, and give you a little more control and distance. Very nice shot. That's good. You got an area down there. Six, seven, one is the most problematic, so you want to work on that. Attack problems first. Good, I'm glad you got the bridge. Nice shot. Really nice shot. That 6-7 is misleading as to leave those as the, as the last couple balls before the 8. When they're real close like that, you want to usually get rid of one of them and then come back later for the other one. So a good pattern there would have been the 3, draw it back for the 6, then come back over for the 5, then the 7, and then the 8 goes in the same pocket that the 7 did, but that's really natural shape from the seven to the eight.
So even though they all go in, this is really tricky. It takes some time to really plan out what you want. Really try to implement this slow and deliberate. You don't get any extra points for going quick. Here we definitely don't have them all free, so what you could do is put a soldier near the other ones, in other words, and meaning kind of bank that five near the six and seven, and then leave the cue ball on the end rail on the left. That way you can, it gives you more breakout balls and insurance balls when you get to that.
Okay, hola. So we have a good opportunity here to go for the nine with high and a little bit of left, which is going to break out that problem ball. This is a perfect breakout shot. So Ola, you only have one ball here that you can hit. Uh, we don't want to kick because you don't want to risk giving up ball in hand. So you want to figure out what you can do, whether it's skimming off the side. And look, it looks like you could combo. The out here, though, is finding that, that where the eight's going to go, okay? And that means you, you really want to go seven, then five, then six to be able to shoot the eight in that corner over there more easily.
So although it works to shoot the five in the side and get shape on the eight, it's higher odds because to shoot it in the corner in the bottom right there because it's a bigger pocket. You're not shooting off of the rail like that. Just gives you a little bit better odds. You always want the best odds there. Excellent. Perfect. All right, you have ball in hand here. Look to see if there is a combo where there's a built-in safety, or this is a good chance to try to three foul your opponent because they're already on one.
I think you meant to do a stop shot there. That way you could have just shot the four in that side right there real easily. And you could still you could still do that. Oh, nice draw. I know you went a little further than you wanted because you would rather be on the other side of the eight, but you're still okay. Wow, that was a great shot right there. Oh. Drew, let's mark that one in your table, and we'll shoot that next time when we get together. Very nice shot, Ola. Beautiful.
here you could try that low right slow stroke if you think you could hold it up to shoot the six or you could play it on the short side of the six there go low left on the five and then get behind it Shooting over a ball makes it much more complex. Awesome job keeping it simple and just stopping it. That's really good. You don't want to get greedy and try to do something fancy, especially when you're elevated over a ball. Really nice. Beautiful. Ooh. Just, uh, I don't think you picked your spot on the rail down there on the lower left that you want to hit. The ball kind of fans out and goes towards the end rail. So you want to pick a spot kind of closer to you than it might seem at first. That way you get on the proper side of the 10. Nice, nice out.
Now see these two, a lot of people leave grouped balls together like that where they're really close to shoot together, but that's why you they're misleading. You want to take one away earlier. One is kind of a problem ball because you're really limited to this little tiny area. Wow. You are a rock star, Drew. Wow. Wow. Awesome matches. You guys are both such a pleasure to work with. This is Jackie Carroll guiding you straight to the scoring position. AngelaBilliards.com.